The current state of U.S. inflation, a looming bipartisan U.S. infrastructure bill. How will these catalysts affect America 2.0 stocks? Welcome Main Street stock investors to Market Talk Monday on the Paul Manpilla YouTube channel, home of a bold profit strong hands nation. Well, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in this week. We're glad to see you. My name is Amber Lancaster. Thanks for tuning in. And today, as you can see, Paul, Paul Manpilly himself is joining us to share his market insights and answer general market questions. But before we begin, please remember uh, to subscribe and like this channel. And also, of course, know that you can follow us in, at boldprofitsdaily.com. You can actually subscribe to our free e-letter there and it will be delivered right to your inbox about six days a week. So let's get started. So hello, Paul, great to see you. Thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me on again, Amber. It's a, a great and growing honor and partly because of the amazing work that you are doing. I see that our channel now has over 37,000 subscribers, Amber. So congratulations to you and all of our team. There's actually a lot of people listening to this that are going to edit this and write the notes. And so we have an amazing team behind us and behind you. And of course, Alex back there, Alex. Alex. Well, he was barking earlier was bark to me, and and I was I was kidding around with you, Amber. That even before I've started talking, he was yawning. So <laughs> I'm gonna have to definitely pick it up for this for for this market talk. So <laughs> let's go. Let's let's have some, as we call in the profits unlimited updates, some spicy questions. Of course. So our first question, Paul, actually has to do with the um, recent potential bipartisan uh, infrastructure bill that's being worked through Congress right now. So the question is, if passed, how will the bipartisan infrastructure bill affect America 2.0 stocks? Well, uh, I personally believe that it will be great for America 2.0 stocks because just think about everything that we do today, Amber. I mean, uh, you go any place, what does everyone look for? Well, they look for an internet connection. Mm -hmm. That's like probably the number one thing. As long as they have water, uh, the next thing that people look for is an internet connection. Mm -hmm. And that means if you're building infrastructure, essentially it means the internet of things. Effectively, the first thing they're gonna do is gonna put up antennas and sensors to measure, monitor, track. And then we've got the next thing, which is generating data, which means artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. And then of course, everything is owned by somebody. It's gonna be owned by a city, a county, a state, maybe the federal government. So well, that's the blockchain. So when I look at infrastructure today, while many people will focus on like, well, it's going towards bridges and roads and things like that. However, in the end, a lot of it is going to end up with the central thing that is so important to our lives today. Mm -hmm. some form of technology. Mm -hmm. So it is going to end up in some way really being awesome, incredible, and phenomenal for our companies, which is then going to drive demand, obviously, for their products and services, and then also for their stocks. Mm -hmm. So that's our stocks. That's the fourth industrial revolution. That's America 2.0. So I believe that the infrastructure bill has passed the house Unfortunately, it has passed in, in partisan fashion, so it's probably going to go through some amount of back and forth and negotiations. However, I still believe that this is going to happen. I believe that's going to be a good thing for our stocks, and that's actually a good thing particularly for our stocks because so much of it will end up really as sales for a lot of our companies. Okay. Good insights there, Paul. So our second question is actually relating to inflation. So Paul, is inflation rising in the US economy or not? And if it is, how will it affect uh, your stock recommendations in the near and possibly long-term? All right, Amber, we've gotten this question now a lot for, from a lot of people on the Profits Unlimited update. And truthfully, actually in preparation for this market talk, I went and looked. Okay. at a number of things. So I went and I compared the price of, of West Texas crude. This is my charting uh, website. That's what they give me access to gasoline, natural gas, uh, corn, wheat, soybeans. Mm. And when you look at it over a very long period from 1979 to now, uh, there, yes, prices are higher than they were in that period between 1979 to about 2000, in other words, pre-globalization. Mm -hmm. 
But in the post-globalization post era, in other words, since India and China and the world became part of the world economy in a substantial way, prices are still largely in that range. They're not really significantly above where they were at the peaks in 2007. The last peak in global commodity prices were really between 2011 and sort of 2014. They're about where they were. So there's no actual sign that there is sustained inflation of the kind that we experienced in the 1970s, which many people are tweeting to me about, writing to us about. What we have seen, Amber, is uh, a significant increase in some number of prices, which when you go and investigate, there's some underlying cause that's highly curable. In other words, there is a shortage of ships to get the particular product to our shores. There is a particular issue with semiconductors where we have huge demand and more demand coming as a result of this infrastructure bill where we just have a general lack of capacity. I went and looked and the US share of global capacity has gone from something like 21%, 22% to 12% today in terms of semiconductor manufacturing. And uh, China and Taiwan and South Korea are in the lead. However, the world as a whole is consuming computer chips at an incredible rate. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's affecting uh, prices. However, these are very cyclical industries. In other words, there is feast or famine. And so you can go through periods where people will never put up a si one single plant. And then the demand comes and then everybody wants their chips yesterday. Now we'll go through a period where people will put up a lot of plants and then eventually we will have a feast where there'll be too much. So the last feast was sort of like in the early 2000s from 1999 to 2002 when we had too much semiconductors, mm -hmm. too many chips, too many plants, and we went through extraordinary consolidation. And now we're seeing the reverse side of this. So there are here and there particular shortages. And of course, the way that shortages are addressed in a capitalist system is that prices rise, demand comes to meet that price rise, which then causes that price to go down. And there is nothing particularly unusual or different that is going on when you consider that we shut the world down for over one year. In a globalized world, there was almost no shipping. There was almost nothing being made. We went into our stocks and completely emptied it out. On Market Talk, you've talked about restocking, reinventorying, and reshoring. Yes. So we are still in the process of restocking because uh, post uh, the, the first couple of waves, we're going through another wave now with this Delta variant with COVID. Mm -hmm. Post the first couple of waves and uh, the vaccination campaigns, people have now started to go out. We're starting whatever the new way of living is, we're doing that. And that has meant more demand. And we're just having uh, our, the time trying to get the, stock, the, the, the shelves filled up for current demand and also then build that first wave of inventory because nobody wants to be in the same position that they were last year. Right. So we've got problems that have been created as a result of the circumstances that are that are currently in place. However, when I look at it, ultimately, the folks that are arguing for inflation are arguing that something's different. In other words, that the post-pandemic world is going to be different in the thing that is most important. In other words, can you find growth from everywhere? In other words, is there something else like the like, like China and India joining sort of the world economy in a substantial way, which really drove commodity prices from, say, about 2000 to 2007, where oil prices went up a great deal and food prices went up. Is there something of that magnitude that is going on? And the truth is that I can find nothing. So if you look at then from a different perspective and look at interest rates, well, interest rates are telling you a completely different story. The 10-year bond is now at 1.1%. At 1.7%, people were talking about hyperinflation and going back to the 70s. Mortgage rates are near all-time lows. You can get a 30-year mortgage for under 3%. You can get a 15-year mortgage for about 2%. And so if you look at who is likely to be right, are the fear mongers on inflation 
who have really very little at stake other than putting out articles and getting people to click to be to be right or is it that is it people who are betting with real money in the bond market who's going to be right and i would say that the bond market's right because people who are buying bonds they really understand what inflation is in other words they are giving someone else money and planning to collect it 10 years later or 20 years later or 30 years later so they would really feel the impact of inflation and in exchange they're willing to take these meager low low rates 1% 2% yeah, uh, this is we're talking about the largest markets in the world, the bond market, the U.S. Treasury market. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that is a market that is filled with very smart people that are looking at things every single day, and they are telling you the opposite. In other words, they are expecting prices to come down. They're expecting growth to come down over time, and that is also a huge plus for us. In other words, we are invested across our services on the basis that growth is scarce. And that means that you want fourth industrial revolution stocks, you want America 2.0 stocks, and you will come and bid them up and pay a premium for it. So that's the basis on which we've invested. And from our perspective, nothing has changed. We still live in a growth scarce environment around the world. And that means America 2.0, that means fourth industrial revolution, that means new world stocks. And so we've gone through a five month period where people have been betting on something being different. And we have sat through that correction across our services. Many people have complained, many have come to argue, some have come to shame me, other folks have have come to call me another scam artist or is pulling a scam, that's all fine. Uh, I am in 100%, 1,000% agreement with Kathy Wood of ARK Invest that has the same outlook that, as, as I do, as we do, which is that nothing has changed. We are going to see stocks that can grow, that are capable of growing because they represent some new form of innovation, some product or service that really caters to a new audience in the United States, that's the millennial generation and Gen Z. That's where the growth is. That's where the growth is going to be for the foreseeable future. So as I like to say, I am B-O-P, bullish, optimistic, positive on our stocks, America 2.0, fourth industrial revolution, new world stocks. And I am completely not bullish, absolutely negative on all these stocks, the Wells Fargo, the Exxon Mobiles of the world that have been bid up on the basis of this hope trade that somehow that something is different. So uh, from, from my perspective, I believe that this inflation scare is really a lot of people writing articles based on something that they can point to. They can put a chart and say, oh, look at this price rise. But it only works if you compare it to a year or two years ago. It does not work if you actually go look at the entire price set. Mm-hmm. Fantastic information there, Paul. I have a third question for you for today. The question is, what are the three best starter stocks to buy in a post-pandemic recovery? Right. I mean, we, as I was saying, the place to be is America 2.0 in the fourth industrial revolution. And as everyone knows, we are seeing multiple revolutions all at once. And one of the most sort of amazing revolutions is this transition to electrical energy and transportation and mobility combined with autonomy. In other words, where we're no longer going to control our modes of transportation, where you can just get into a car and it will take you where you need to be. And you can read, you can watch a movie, you can maybe eventually even we can cook a meal or something. It might be kind of fun. Popcorn, Amber. I mean, uh, and I have found an amazing stock that we've actually put into one of our premium services Mm -hmm. called True Momentum. And if you're interested in finding this out, we're not going to give it away for free. Mm -hmm. I have an amazing presentation with my phenomenal colleague, Nick, uh, that we tell you about the service, about the strategy and We tell you a few details about the stock without giving it away. If you want to check into that, I'll click on the strong hands above. It's actually more like a strong fist, Amber. (laughs) Strong hands above, and that will take you to a presentation on this strategy, this service, and and, and this stock. Um, 
Now to answer the question that you were talking about, three stocks for the post-pandemic period. Well, this is a bit of a no-brainer. I mean, we've 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 defended these stocks on the Profits Unlimited update, uh, which is that people have said that the zooms of the world were going to be done for once the you know once people came back to the office mm. and telemedicine nobody's going to you know want to use it uh, forget all that and then this world of testing in other words there's so many tests that 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 we have done as a result of covid mm. that it's actually now start to extend into so many other places in other words we have extraordinary capability of testing people for all kinds of viruses, also for many genetic diseases. Mm -hmm. And so I would say that the continuation of these, these trends where more things are going to go virtual and more often, and where we will simply start to really rely on it, always this, these options always being there. Mm -hmm. So that, that's one of those things. And these are represented by stocks like Zoom. We're recording this on Zoom. Oh, yeah. And telemedicine. I mean, today with the Delta variant out there, once again, people are reluctant to go to doctor's offices. I'm reluctant to go to a clinic. Yeah. I'd rather, unless I absolutely have to, absolutely just go to my computer and definitely consult with a doctor and see, do I absolutely have to come in? So those are two pretty obvious places post-pandemic that you can talk about. Mm -hmm. Then there's, um, there's uh, as I mentioned, testing that's in there, uh, uh, molecular testing, which can really be applied to all of healthcare. And then the emergence of this amazing mRNA technology that has already created two vaccines that are 95% effective. I mean, that's just extraordinary. You can go th look through the history of vaccines. We have never had a vaccine that is this effective, 95% efficacy. So, and it was come up with, come up with in almost one year. So very, very fast, very specific, very efficacious. So mRNA technology is another place that I would say is a, is a place to invest. And of course, I'm wearing this t-shirt, which um, is uh, the speech from JFK um, talking about going to the moon. Mm. And the one thing that's happened during the pandemic is that there is a new space race, Amber, yeah. And the space race now is in the private sector. Mm -hmm. We had two billionaires pitted against each other. We had Richard Branson of Virgin fame, Jeff Bezos from Amazon, and then sort of a little bit in the background, even though they're the leader, is SpaceX with their, with their rockets that go into space and then come back and land sometimes on drone ships in the ocean. I mean, this is not science fiction actually happening go and look on YouTube. So space has really matured. It's now really looking like it's going to set up like it's the Bitcoin of 2011. In other words, this is the moment to really get invested in space. And because three years from now, people say, whoa, it was so obvious when Richard Branson went into space, when Jeff Bezos went into space, I should have bought some space stocks. So those are the places I would be invested for post-pandemic America. Oh, great information there, Paul. We appreciate you coming on today and sharing your insights. Knowledgeable as always. Appreciate you so much, Paul. Thanks for having me on. You're doing an awesome job. So yeah. thank you. Oh, you're most welcome. Thank you, Paul. See you soon. Bye. Right, thanks. <laughs> So a very big thank you to Paul for joining us today on Market Talk Monday. And I have a housekeeping heads up, if you will, for our Profits Unlimited members. So this week I'll be sending out uh, your quarterly earnings express video, also known as Amber's Earnings Express, where I give you a behind the scenes look at how I track company earnings for Paul. So with that, um, actually this quarterly update, I can tell you is a special update focusing on earnings for some of your Profits Unlimited uh, stocks. And in this update, I have to tell you that I cover upcoming earnings releases and a very, very special Bloomberg feature that helps investors gauge future earnings surprises. So I have to tell you, plus my fellow gearheads out there who are watching, if you're a car uh, fan like I am, I'll cap off this video with my quarterly mystery car challenge and your chance to win a strong hands t-shirt. And if you're not yet a Profits Unlimited member, 
Come join us by clicking the link in the description section of this video or by visiting us at ProfitsUnlimited.com. Just sign up for our stock research service. I think you won't regret it. Uh, be, it costs about, about $49 to $100 per year and you gain access to Paul's America 2.0 stock picks like you just heard from Paul. And as Manuel, a wonderful subscriber to this YouTube channel wrote to us last week, Quote, if you haven't subscribed to Profits Unlimited, you are truly missing out on a service that should cost thousands. Instead, you get it for pennies on the dollar. Do yourself a big favor and get on board. I'm up 115% in two years, and that's only because of the current volatility since February. So I have to say thank you. Thank you so much for your vote of conf confidence, Manuel. And I appreciate you. We all appreciate you so much. You rock. So lastly, turning toward the U.S. economic calendar week ahead, well, there will be six major economic reasons releases. They are as follows. On Tuesday, June's factory orders and durable goods orders, well, they'll post at 10 a.m. On Wednesday, July's ADP employment change will post at 8.15 a.m. And on Thursday, June's trade balance will post at 8.30 a.m. And lastly, on Friday, July's jobs report and June's final print for wholesale inventories month over month will post at 10 a.m. And of course, remember, you can follow Paul and me on Twitter at Guru and at a, a Lancaster guru. Thank you so much for tuning in everyone this week. We appreciate you so much and until next time, take care.